Welcome back in today's face off. NBC News has learned the Pentagon is preparing at least one battalion of Marines for deployment to Afghanistan sometime before Christmas. President Obama will announce plans to escalate the war during Tuesday's primetime address to the nation from the United States Military Academy at West Point. And during a news conference yesterday, the president made his intentions pretty clear. After eight years, uh, some of those years in which we did not have. I think either the resources or the strategy to get the job done, uh, it is my intention to finish the job. So how does the president define finishing the job and can he sell his plan to a skeptical public? The polls show split down the middle when it comes to expanding the war. Here to face off Democratic strategist Keith Boykin and Republican strategist David Winston. So David, I'll start off with you because a lot of Republicans have supported an escalation. So you're, we're looking at some of the numbers around 35 to 40,000 new troops on the ground. What's your thoughts on the president saying it's finishing the job? Well, I think first off, I mean, this was a campaign promise he made and to some degree he had said the focus was in correct in terms of it shouldn't have been Iraq, it should have been Afghanistan. And so he's following sort of through in terms of this promise. Having said that, I, I, I agree with it. I mean, I, th I think the decision that he made, although it took a while, the decision he's making is the right one. I think it's going to move things forward. So ultimately, he kept a campaign promise. And from a Republican point of view, I think he's making the right decision. Should there be a timeline? I, I think that's up to the commanders on the ground. They're the ones who are going to define how things should occur. It's up to the president to find the sort of broad strategic dynamic in terms of which those individuals operate. But would you support a time like the president uh, comes out on Tuesday and says, listen, we've already been there eight years. We're going to commit to X amount. Uh, would you support that? I mean, you know that the polls show it's split, and we, again, have been there eight years. I, I, I mean, I, I couldn't agree that this has been an elongated process, and it's certainly been difficult for people to go through. But ultimately, he is making a commitment to do the right things in terms of getting the war won the way he needs it done. That may take a year. That may take two years. I can't imagine him giving himself a timeline in that situation. Keith, uh, the president's saying he's got to finish the job here. Do you think that he'll have uh, some kind of benchmark or timeline? Because when you say finish the job, that sounds so open-ended. And again, looking at these polls, people aren't ready to have our men and women there for another eight, it sounds like. Well, I don't think he will have a timeline. I do think that he will have some benchmarks. I think those yeah. benchmarks will be used to define exactly what success looks like. And I think that's important he communicate that to the American people what next week. What does success week. look like in your thoughts? Well, that, that's a very good question, Tamara. I, I don't mm -hmm. know the answer to that. I think uh, for a lot of Americans, we don't know the answer either. I think par probably it means some sort of stability in, in, uh, in, in Afghanistan. It means the ability for American troops to pull out and Afghan troops to be able to be fully armed and capable. It means they have a functioning government that's not incompetent and that's not corrupt. Those are a lot of, a lot of difficult benchmarks to it's, me. And it's certainly true. So, David, I'll ask you, what is the goal here? I mean, if it is to root out al-Qaeda, According to the numbers, there are only about 100 members of Al Qaeda in Afghanistan. They certainly are, though, in other parts of Africa and around the world. What is the goal? Well, I, I think go, going to what was just said, that is exactly what he's going to need to clearly define so people understand what is success. I mean, from my point of view, that the Taliban clearly does not play a role here in, in, in the way it has in terms of supporting terrorism and getting Al Qaeda out, out of Afghanistan. But to some degree, that's his definition. He clearly said, going back to the campaign, that Afghanistan. Afghanistan need to be the sort of focus here. He's going to define what success is, and that's going to be a major portion of his speech next Tuesday, I would assume. And Keith, real quick though, if you put more people on the ground, and we've seen this with the surge and other escalations, that means sadly uh, perhaps the possibility of more men and women mm -hmm. coming home um, dead. Well, yeah, and, because and you... that's the hard part. And when people start seeing that, you and I both know reactions greatly vary, but they usually are. You don't want to be there anymore. Well, sadly, that's what war is all about. Yeah. I mean, um, when you put more people on the ground, more boots on the ground, that means you have more targets, which means we probably will have more casualties. The other reality is that it's going to be more expensive. We're yeah. talking about a million dollars per soldier for this. If we're having a 30,000 troop increase, we're talking about $30 billion in increased, increased spending in the middle of a financial crisis. So it's going to be very difficult. And he's going to have to use his sales ability to pitch it to the American people. All right, let's move on to topic number two, something a little lighter, perhaps. John Boehner and his overblown, some would say, golf expenses. Let me show you guys exactly what we're talking about. His pack spent over $20,000 on an outing at the exclusive Robert Trent Jones course in Virginia, shelled out nearly $30,000 for rounds at uh, Muirfield in Ohio and also a Ritz-Carlton uh, course in Florida. And they say they raised money for, uh, for other candidates, but what, too much? 
What do you think? We'll start with you, Keith. <laughs> well, it, it just solidifies the image of the Republicans as the party of the country club crowd. Of <laughs> course, the, 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 when we have a country where we're dealing with a financial crisis, we have an economic collapse, 10 percent unemployment, and the Republican policy proposals seem to be nothing but give more tax cuts to the rich again. We've tried that before. It didn't work for eight years of the, of the Bush administration. I think that uh, John Boehner basically is, is the epitome of everything that's wrong with the Republican Party. David, David, they say they were doing it for a good cause, though. Well, no, I mean, obviously I'm going to disagree here. I mean, look, John Boehner was trying to raise money for Republican candidates. In the last cycle, he raised somewhere between a million and a million and a half dollars uh, to be able to help Republican candidates get their message out. Uh, John Boehner uses golf when Barack Obama does it. He does, he takes people to uh, Hollywood stars' homes and raises money there, and there's expenses there. It's the process of raising money. I mean, this is, a, this is the way you raise money. I mean, if you want to talk about who's played golf more this year, um, I think if you contrast John Boehner and uh, Barack Obama, I think Barack Obama has played Quite a bit of golf this year. I think we're missing the point. It's not the number of days they play golf; it's the cost of it. And you have you got morning Joe, Joe Scarborough, a Republican, uh, who's on this morning saying this is insane. If you want to portray to the American people that you care and you get it, this but, shows that you've got access to the rich and famous and the guy at Piggly Wiggly or that angry so, mom or dad at the town hall, not hanging out with twenty thousand so, dollars. So, but, but bear with me. So you're saying, okay, if if he had raised it through a rock concert, the way Barack Obama does, or the way raise it by taking people to sort of stars' homes, that's okay. But no, the way the way John right Boehner now, does it is raise it through through golf tournaments. Well, let me answer I mean, what I'm saying. Okay. What I'm saying is right now the Republicans are trying to pick up traction by saying that this administration is not paying attention to the loss of jobs, is not relating to the average working man, and that they are ready to get in there and do the work of the people. And it's about perception. And you and I both know we're in TV. Perception can be reality. And that's a part of what happened in August with the town halls. It was a perception there, but, but, and it was a small amount of people who, whose voices were loud and clear. But, so, but, but uh, Tamron, the problem is the Republican Party is philosophically incapable of, cr of creating a consistent perception about being of the people. Oh, They're not of David, the people. David, I'll let you explain. They've never I'm been of the people. I'm, so out, I'm out, David. <laughs> $30,000 for the Naples, Naples, uh, no, but, but, Ritz Carlton. But that's the cost of doing fundraising. I mean, you're, you're trying to attract people to go to an event, to raise money, to be able to help Republican candidates. I mean, that, that's going to happen. But, but if I may, I mean, Tamara, going to your point, I mean, it has been John Boehner who's been focusing on the question, where are the jobs? And I have to say, it's just been recently that Barack Obama's decided to announce this sort of job summit. And so, to be, to be fair to Boehner, Boehner has been pushing about where are the jobs for a long time here. The well, best jobs are caddies, apparently, for Naples, Florida, the Ritz Carlton. <laughs> well, that, I would say that's a bit unfair. Well, I'd say it's funny, but Keith, David, on this Thanksgiving. Yeah, may, but still unfair. Okay. Yeah, yeah, true. It can <laughs> okay, be. Okay. Uh, Keith, David, appreciate it. David, we're going to hang out with you because apparently you know where the $20,000 <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. David, we're here eating hot dogs on the streets of New York. we got to hang out with you. Street <laughs> Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you.